If a policeman is killed in Dallas and they have no clue or guide, if they can't find a friend, they just wipe their slate clean and hang it on Bonnie and Clyde. Hi everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This video is about the tragic murder of Tarrant County Deputy Sheriff Malcolm Davis. That was a quote from The Trail's End by Bonnie Parker written sometime in 1934 unknown specific date, but was Bonnie thinking about Malcolm Davis when she wrote this poem? Of course, we will never know, but there's a very good chance that she was thinking of him. Most historians will agree that many robberies and murders were erroneously accredited to Bonnie and Clyde or one of their associates. However, it can truthfully be stated that the murder of Malcolm Davis was committed by Clyde Barrow. In the book titled Fugitives, Clyde's sister is quoted in saying that Clyde admitted that he fired a 16-gauge shotgun at Malcolm Davis. Clyde did admit that Davis came upon him very quickly, and he quickly turned to Davis and fired the shotgun. According to Clyde's sister, Nell, he told this story to her and his mother. Clyde stated that he felt very sick after the killing. Today, we know that this murder by Clyde was not intentional. Nonetheless, a police officer was killed while doing what he was sworn to accomplish. This is the story of Malcolm Davis. Malcolm Simmons Davis had many tragedies in his life. Malcolm was the youngest of five children born to James Hudson Davis and Amanda Simmons. Malcolm was born on July 7, 1881. Less than one year later, Malcolm's mother would pass away at the age of 32. Also in 1882, Malcolm's seven-year-old sister, Susan, would pass away. Both mother and daughter are buried in Madison County, Tennessee where the Davis family lived and farmed. Malcolm's father had the responsibility of raising four children, a heavy burden for a man in 1882. James Hudson Davis married twice more in his lifetime and had three more children. Malcolm's father moved his family to Texas in 1898 and settled in an area that is now known as Grapevine. Malcolm's father and his older brother, Leander Kenneth, each had a farm where Malcolm would work. About 1915, Malcolm moved to Fort Worth and became successful in selling cars. He worked for several dealerships, including the Chandler Motor Car Company, the Mitchell Auto Company, which was located at 211 Commerce Street, the Percy Garrett Motor Company, and the Wright Automotive Company, located at 600 Commerce Street. Malcolm was a member of the Grapevine Masonic Lodge, which was started in 1866, and the Grapevine Methodist Church. While working in Fort Worth, Malcolm stayed in rooming homes. One such place was at 102 and one half East Wedford Street, not far from the Tarrant County Courthouse. In 1919, Malcolm would become a deputy sheriff. At the time, the sheriff was Sterling Price Clark. The sheriff and Malcolm knew each other from being Masons, and Clark knew that Malcolm was a respected and trustworthy man. Learning under Sheriff Clark, Malcolm gained the skills needed to track some of the worst criminals in the area. Malcolm was also... So well-liked, many encouraged him to place his name on the ballot for the next sheriff's election in 1924. Although Malcolm gained many votes and support, he came in third place in the election. Not long after Lake Worth was built in 1914, Malcolm purchased some land along the banks of the lake and spent much of his time there with his family fishing and camping. Malcolm investigated many crimes, one such being the December 29, 1932 bank robbery of the Grapevine Home Bank. 
Malcolm was appointed lead investigator since he knew that part of the country and the people. The investigation soon led to two criminals, Oldell Chambless and Les Stewart. On the morning just before noon, the two robbers entered the bank through the front doors and ordered bank president R.E. Morrow to open the vault door. Once they had the bank's money, the robbers ordered the bank president, vice president, and cashier, along with three customers, into the vault. The robbers left with about $3,000 in cash. Malcolm received word that Champless may go to Raymond Hamilton's sister's house, located at 507 County Road in West Dallas. Hamilton was an associate of Clyde Barrow. On January 6, 1933, Malcolm and four other lawmen arrived at the house hoping to catch the bank robbery suspects there. Champless was not there, so they waited on the inside of the house. Late in the night, a Ford coupe stopped in front of the house. Clyde Barrow walked from the car to the front porch. He was carrying a sawed-off shotgun. As Clyde stepped on the front porch, he observed through the window that officers were waiting inside. Clyde immediately opened fire through the window. Lawmen inside immediately returned fire. Malcolm and W.G. Evans, an investigator for the Tarrant County District Attorney's Office, ran out the back door, around the side of the house, toward the front porch. Clyde fired at Malcolm, hitting him with a shotgun blast to the chest. Clyde then ran into the darkness, escaping the bloody scene. Malcolm did not live for long. He died shortly after being shot by Clyde. Investigator Evans stated that Malcolm did not have his weapon drawn from the holster. At first, the police were not sure who fired the deadly shot. For a short while, Charles Pretty Boy Floyd was considered a suspect. On January 25th, Champless surrenders to lawmen in Pampa, Texas, after hearing that a statewide manhunt was being initiated for him. He had an airtight alibi, though. He was in a California jail at the time of Malcolm's murder. Champless was eventually convicted of the Grapevine bank robbery and sentenced to 33 years at the age of 21. It would not be until December 1933 that Clyde Barrow and Bonnie Parker were indicted for the murder of Malcolm Davis. In October 1934, W.D. Jones was convicted for his part in the murder. Jones was in the Ford Coupe that fateful night, along with Bonnie. Jones fired his firearm toward the house until Bonnie told him to stop in fear of hitting Clyde. Malcolm was laid to rest in Grapevine Cemetery not far from his family's farm. Spellman Seacrest Weller Funeral Home handled the burial. Malcolm was 51 years old. Although Malcolm had many friends and was well-liked, he never married and he had no children. Malcolm was buried near his father who passed away in 1929. During the funeral service for Malcolm, Reverend Frank P. Culver, Sr. stated, The tragedy of Malcolm's death should not be possible in this civilized age, and no man or woman should be clothed with the power to turn loose upon the public those who murder and rob, but people get just what they demand. I have the deepest respect for men who try to keep peace in this world and protect the public. We are too ready to criticize officers of the law. We do not always realize how much their protection means. They risk their lives and too often give their lives for our peace and security. No greater honor is due the soldier who dies on the field of battle than is due a peace officer who lays down his life for our protection. There may be born out of this tragedy a blessing which may come years after the grass is green on the grave of our friend. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, subscribe, comment, and share.